shed of blood that was pure. Nobody. It don't matter what you got, how saved you is, if he wouldn't have died, nobody can do it. Nobody. I was on my way to hell and I don't have to go there now. Ain't nothing I did. Ain't nothing I did. He did a finished work. He said, Father, it is finished. And even today, people still being saved by what he did 2,021 years ago. We thank God for being God all by himself. I'm not an entertainer, so I can't do a lot of prepping or trying to prep you up to love God if you don't already love him. I mean, he tell us to come into his court with praise and thanksgiving. Be grateful for what he has done this morning. He woke me up. I still can see. I still got the activity of my limbs. I can walk. I can talk. There's people laying in the hospital right now. Wish they can be in church. Wish they can clap. And we got everything working. You know, so many people say that. They don't see no miracles today. They, they say they want to see some miracles. I'm one. I'm a miracle. You ain't got to look for no, no miracle. I woke up this morning. That's a miracle. If he had not touched me, if he had not reached down and touched Terry, Terry wouldn't have got up. That's why I love him so. And can't no man kill me unless he want me to die. Can't no disease kill me if he don't want me to die. He control everything. And we make him so small. We have a little old problem and we, we don't know who to go to. Who handle all the other problems you had? Acts, the second chapter. You know, the church tried to preach so many different places. And I know the Old Testament have just as much meaning as the New Testament. But when God got ready to deal with his church, the church began in Acts. It went all the way back to Revelation. And y'all know what I'm finding out? We still messed up just as messed up as they were then. And Jesus had not died yet. And even though he don't die for us and gave us the New Testament, we still act like we lost. Acts the second chapter, begin at the 39th, 30, 39th verse. When you have it, you can say amen. And it read, for the promise is unto you and your children and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exalt saying, save yourself from this untoward generation. 
Then they that was gladly received his word was baptized. In the same day, there was added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfast in the apostle's doctrine, in fellowshipping, and in breaking bread, and in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father in Jesus. God, I'm back behind your sacred desk where I love to be to do what you have called me to do. You didn't call me to preach for filthy lucas. You didn't call me to please man. You called me to preach your unadulterated gospel. Man don't owe me nothing because you have gave me everything. God, you said in your word, if you be lifted up from the earth, you say you'll draw all men unto me. God, I come to lift up that name that is above every name. And that name is Jesus. Holy Ghost, have your way in this service. And God, we forever give the praise. We give the thanks. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And every heart can say amen, amen, amen. And you can have your seed. God is such a good God. He is such a deliverer. He is my everything. Without him, I wouldn't be nothing. I'm talking about me. I, I don't know how y'all feel about him. But without him, I would be nothing. I was on my way to hell and I know it. But he reached down and said, Terry, if you let me use you, I can do something that the world would never think I'd do with you. And pop goes the weasel, here I am. Preaching something that I didn't want to do. One of was brought up in church. Out in the street, hoeing and doing everything I wanted to do. And God said, if you allow me to use you. Promise made, a promise kept. He told me, if you preach my gospel, I'll save every one of your sons. And they will preach the gospel. And all my sons are preachers. Don't tell me he ain't a promise keeper. See, y'all asking for money. But the thing you should be asking for that means something to you, you ain't asking for. Let's see what he said. He began to tell us in Romans 6 and 13. You don't have to turn there. It said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt lose his savior, where will, where will shall it be salt? It is this for good for nothing, but to be cast out and tossed under men's feet. Which one salt? Which one salt? See, the eyes play with you. See, everything that say they save ain't saved, even though they look like it. You can tell me you saved, you can tell me you love God, but when I look at you, identical, could be twin. But he told us to be the salt of the earth, and now the church has became sugar. Which one is it? One, one verse says, uh, a little quote said, uh, don't get caught up with your eyes because your eyes will fool you. And the world has begun to change the gospel from being salty to sweet. That's why our children ain't saved. Because what God asks us to do, we don't take it home with them. And most preachers not preaching. This ministry, a soul-saving ministry. We're not here for hook or crook. We're not here to try to look good. We're not here to try to get nobody money. We're trying to make you know who you should love. And we got many ways. They say there's many ways to get to heaven. That there's a lot of ways to get to hell. Life is short. Death is sure. Sin is the cause. Christ is the cure. Whatever you're going through, he got your back. If you allow him to be who he is to you, promise made, promise kill. My word today is save yourself. 
from this untoward world, this untoward generation. And a lot of us might not know what untoward means because it sounds like some just common to say, save yourself. But he's making it personal. He said, Terry, save yourself. He said, save myself from what? From this untoward generation. That means all the people that's in the world. Save yourself. But I, don't li I like to make it come to us. That's why I put world. But now if I break down untoward, you understand what I mean. It's unruly. Y'all know how the world is. It's unruly. You can't hardly pass by nobody and brush up on them unless they're ready to almost kill you. That's unruly. That's, that's something that God never called for. Unproper. Y'all take which one y'all want to say the world is like to you. Not favoring. That was, the, all these words is what untoward is. But see, if I left it untoward, you might not understand. But he still told you, save yourself from this generation. Save yourself from this world. And now we still love the world, even though God tells us don't love the world. Not a thing in the world. But we pattern our life around the world. We center ourselves for what the world doing. Said perverse. Now y'all look at the world. Same sex marriage. Legal. In school, they try to pay God out of school, but they let Santana's teaching be in school. They want to teach about gay. That's, that's, a, that's a perverse generation. And we got churches everywhere. We got big mega mega churches, but they won't talk about this. They won't talk about what the world doing. When we supposed to be the light of the world. And that's why he told us we got to say salty. But y'all can't tell me which one is salt. Because the church and the world begin to look just alike. Y'all ain't got to tell me. Y'all ain't got to tell me. Then it said, unpleasant generation. Unpleasant world. You know, you hate to wake up sometime. Because you don't know what you're going to face today. You don't know who might shoot you. You don't know who might just cuss you out. I mean, little children, six and seven years old, or cuss you out like they grown. That's unpleasant. God never planned for it to be there. The church is trying to be sweet when we're supposed to be so. Unseemly. All that's un un see, You see how big that word is? But he told you and me, save ourselves from it. What y'all going to do? Because we can't be just saving church. And that's why I wore a right robe. Look at him. And you know, white is the only color that don't need no other mixture. That's why he tell us to be pure. He don't want to be mixed up with the world. He don't want to be mixed up with sin because it's going to make you look bad. Which one of them is salt and which one is sugar? I had to mark it because I didn't want to be up in the pulpit lying and saying it was salt and that was sugar. I don't really know. So I marked with one sugar. But I know y'all can't tell with the natural eye. So how do y'all tell a real man of God? How do y'all tell a woman or a man that's saved when they still cuss and smoke and hold money? How, well, it's a separation when God tells us to be different. What, what is a separation? It said, it said he's telling us these things because he really wants to know. It said God gave us a will. God didn't put, a, put man in slavery. What I mean by that God gave you a choice to pick which one you want to be. He gave you a will. Even though he created, he could have made you a robot. He said, no, I want somebody to choose that they're going to decide to love me. They're going to choose to walk away from the world and be with me. They're going to choose to be pure. You don't just get pure by coming to church. That's why God told us, you must be born again. And now everybody just want to come to church again. And they come to church just out of uh, 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 obligation. They said, I'm going to just go to church this morning. When he told us to be the church, he said, unwanted, ungrateful, troublesome, unfair, wicked. Is this world wicked? You don't help make it wicked, do Because the church don't want to make it wicked. 
we for to bring some flavor to this. That's why we the salt. Sugar don't bring no flavor. My daddy told me, boy, you gonna keep eating candy, your teeth gonna fall out. Y'all eat, keep eating this watered down mess, your teeth ain't gonna fall out. Everyone love a positive mess. But don't nobody love a negative mess. Heaven is positive. Hell is negative. But save yourself from this untoward generation. Because you're going to spend eternity somewhere. You know, so many people tell me that they don't believe it was a hell. But they ain't never tell me they ain't believe that was a heaven. But they're in the same, same book. So what if it is a hell and you keep living like you're living? And everybody tell me that God is not going to put nobody in hell. He didn't. Didn't you hear me tell you he gave you a will? He gave you a choice to make your decision. Where would you spend eternity? You can live 100 years old and eternity is from now on to now on to now on to now on to now on. And then you're going to be conscious of everything going on in hell. You ain't even conscious of everything going on in the world. Because next door, you don't know who the neighbor is. That's how perverse this world is. This is what he said. He's telling us this because God really wants us to know the world is a social uh, system set up by man that tried to make himself happy without God. The world is set up to make us stop looking at God because that's all the Kobe was. The Kobe was a test from God to see what the church was going to do. And the church shut up, stuck their tail up in their butt, and went home. But we said, if God be for you, who? That's what we said. If, 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 if God is for you, it won't even come near your dwelling. We say he's a healer. But when COVID came, we found out what the church was. They want to do church on TV. Where's the power of God? He said, it was, if it was possible, the very elect could be fooled. That's what God said. But the problem is, is that the church has became to love money. And he tells us in his word that in 1 Timothy 6 and 10, he said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Then never say he want man not to have money. But because man started loving money, they forgot about church and they forgot about God. And as you get a, you a couple nickels in your pocket, you'll forget about him too. Because when you have no need or no wants, man get to think that they don't need God. But he told me today to tell you to save yourself. He ain't said nothing about your neighbor. He said save yourself from this untoward generation. Then he said crooked world. Y'all know it's crooked? Y'all know it's crooked? He said, but for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, after they went after, they have error from the faith and pierced themselves through with, with man, many sorrow. He said, now, now they got many sorrow because, you know, more people that win the lotto, y'all don't know that everybody win the lotto, they thought they were having kin people they don't know nothing about. Everyone pop up to the house. They ain't seen the grandma in 50 years. She, she baby, baby, baby. I'm your grandmama. I'm your auntie. I'm this and that. And the start because it brings sorrow to you because everybody wants some. But in Acts, where the church began, he started talking to them. He said, For the promise is unto you and your children. So if y'all mamas and daddy will say, God will promise you that your children will be all right. But a lot of us parents are so caught up in our own shakedown 
<laughs> and what we want to do and how we want to enjoy life, we can't find ourselves to walk like God wants. Is you salt us? Is you salt us, sugar? He told us to be the salt of the earth. Y'all, y'all read that, then? Which one are you? How salty are you? You know, I try to eat some collard green without some salt. They don't tell you that good. But baby, you sprinkle that. Uh, what's the name of the salt in the blue bar? Come on, I like y'all been shopping. I know y'all don't start see. They got the two. We Molten was the best salt. Now we've seen that salt that called 26 cents in the church, in the stove. So we start getting the cheap salt, and then we wonder why it still don't taste good. And that's what we're trying to do now. We're trying to find a cheap God to make sure that we can be all right still. God ain't cheap. He died for us. He died for us. And tonight, the church want to just do what they want to do. And that's why he said, look, he said, for the promise is unto you and your children and to all. All that are fall, your family member. And we wonder why people not say it because we error, and then our family members see our error, and we supposed to be salt, but we now we sugar because now we start sweetening everything up in the church. That's just to keep people. I don't care if all y'all don't come back. I'm going to do what God tell me to do. I'm going to stay salt. And then when you want some flavor, you got to come back. When everything out in the church gets sweet and you start having sissy pastors and pedophiles in the pulpit. And we'll still go there. But God said, don't be a partaker of another man wrongdoing. Why well, I'm going to be a partaker of a man I know molesting children? Why well, I'm going to go to church where they let sisters and all that operate in the church? What I'm going to do that for? He said, Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. Y'all hear that? Because we owe the debt that we could not pay. He came down to 42 generations to die for us, and then we'll play around with everything else. Every devil is, and ain't, the devil ain't going to never give you nothing. His job is to deter you away from God. Hear all these people talking about, man, you don't understand. You don't understand. God is good, though, but I just believe in doing what I want to do. I can't see myself being saved. It said Jesus is the only one that can deliver you, save you from sin and give you salvation, protection, preserve you, heal you, and deliver you. That sounds like he got, a, he got a long resume. You know, if I, if I was trying to hire somebody to, to be my attorney or to, or, to, or to make sure I make it to heaven, I believe I'll hire Jesus. And I, I don't know who y'all going to hire, but it sounds like a resume hold real good. And then we'll make it so good. The blood that he shed it did is still good today. Y'all know that's powerful. Y'all talking about a resume. I don't know what y'all, what y'all looking for, but it sounds like he got a real good resume. The Christian life is not a playground. It is a spiritual battlefield. Because every time you turn around, the more close you get to God, here come the enemy. And when you're going after God, he attacks stuff that you love. All he wants you to do is make a U-turn and come back to him. Save yourself. He said, save yourself. He's telling, he telling everybody here, you can't get saved for your wife. You can't get saved for your husband. He said, save yourself. He made it personal. He made it individual because he know my wife might not want to be saved. That's where the, that where the friction started coming at. Because if she don't want to be saved, she's going to put a weight on me. Because she'll go to church with you, but she ain't stunned by serving God. But that's why he said, what well, God joined together. A lot of stuff God ain't joined together because he said, how can two walk together? It's self. He's telling you, the only way you're going to walk together with your, your wife or your husband, you got to be. I think we go to church too much. <laughs> you ain't going to agree. I don't like five o'clock prayer. She ain't going to agree or he ain't going to agree. That's what they say about Jezebel. She'll impress you that she loved God, which her God is really her. He said, you don't want to talk about that. Look what he said. You can enjoy sinful pleasure for a time, but there will be an awful price to pay for them. You know how everybody having fun now? 
gays together and stuff like that, and they having fun. But law, when they when they go to hell, they gonna be separated, and every man gonna have to answer for his own. But gays ain't the only one bad. Liar, homemonger, shacking. Oh, uh, it's, it's a lot of see y'all. It's a lot of stuff that we do in the church that ain't legal. Smoking. That's what he said. He talking to us. Y'all, y'all act like y'all don't got mad with the word, man. Y'all ain't got mad, is it? Because you know we'll get we'll get caught up a little bit, you know, because the spirit, you know, you'll be saying the spirit talking to you and telling you, I shouldn't be saying that. Spirit ain't spirit ain't told you that. Spirit, the spirit ain't told you that. Look what he said. He said, he who is almost persuaded is almost saved. And to be almost saved is to be entirely lost. So God ain't taking you saying, I go to church. And I go to Bible study. How you living? How, how, how you living? That's what I like about God. He, 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 yes, he's just so awesome. Look what it said. It says, save the most misunderstood word in the Bible. Because you know what? Both of them look saved. Which one salt? Which one sugar? I want that to plunder in your heart right there. Because I know the mind is a terrible thing in the way. And I know y'all sitting there saying, I know sugar is on the right. I know salt is on the left. No, I might know sugar on the left. I know salt on the right. Where they both on the salt? That mind in them eyes. See, that's why he tell you, he said, he said, he said, what is it? Three things God don't like. The lust of the what? And the pride of? And what the other one is? Your eye what? Lust of your eye? Pick it. This is how we start breaking out and start deciding on who's saved. If you wear a suit, he's saved. If you don't wear a suit, he ain't saved. If he don't cuss, he saved. There's some people just don't cuss. Hey. Y'all all right? This is what he said. He said, for the promise unto you and your children and to all that are fall, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So he said, no man can come to God itself. God called him. So God called all of in the morning. For what? What he want us to hear? I think he wanted you to hear that a lot of y'all ain't saved. But we go to church. Just tell it all. Is you salt or is you sugar? Let me explain sugar. You don't never want to tell nobody they wrongdoing. And I don't know if it's because you're doing wrong or you just don't know a right to tell them. Or you think because that's my child, that's my mama, that's my daddy, that's my brother, sister, we won't tell the truth. But God told us to be the salt of the earth. That means we ought to bring some flavor to everywhere we go. Salt or sugar. Which one are you? Do you defend the gospel? Are you a contender for the faith of the gospel? That's salty. Because everybody now said, don't nobody want to come to church and be judged. Right? But let me ask you this. If somebody come to your house and they got on a ski mask and it's 130 degrees outside and they got on a coat, what they come to your house for? Or what you think they're going to come from. So now you judge. So the Bible says you also should know them by their fruit. So that means if I know a person by their fruit, you can't tell me that you're a believer. And then God said, you know, y'all used the apple in the beginning, but he didn't put nothing on there about the apple. That's some, somebody told that lie at the beginning, and we don't carry that lie all the way through the church. Because I ain't read nowhere that was an apple. But we're going to just leave it an apple. 
But if God told you to be an apple and you're a watermelon, now me, I'm going to think something wrong with you. Back when I was coming up, I know this ain't the proper English for y'all because y'all got other words y'all said about that. But when I was coming up, when a person was kind of slow, they call them ill-afflicted. So a lot of people don't like that today because they say that that's improper grammar. But in my era, that's what they say. What they say in y'all era? Disabled? Development delayed. See, my boy won't go like that, so I had to just say they slow. So do y'all be development delayed when y'all don't do what God said? We know what God said, but we act like we don't know what God said. This is what it said. Sin doesn't need much space to work with. The tiny crack will do. Y'all ever know that watching TV, I'm going to talk to a man because y'all women's a lie. We get to watching TV, and then all of a sudden, they want to bring a little teenager on there with a little skippy clothes on. And, and the every man start wondering. Not that you had no lust problem, not that you were thinking about nothing, but they put all this stuff on TV to get your mind somewhere else. Okay? Y'all women do that too. <laughs> I ain't think y'all I ain't think y'all do that because y'all always act like we the only hoes in, in the in the world. We ain't the only one. But then that's the way the church make it. The church make the man look bad and never deal with the woman. See that's what I'm talking about. That, 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 that ain't the kind of church I like. But this is what you need. Because I'm salty. This is what he said. He said the most misunderstand word in the Bible is saved. Also, one of the most used. Because everybody else said they saved. But I ask you, you saw the sugar. You can't shack up with the devil and expect for God to pay your rent. You can't do, keep doing what the world and the thing God said not to do, and then you want God to help you out when you have a problem. Because, you know, everybody serves themselves. When they get in a bad predicament, they call God. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? You don't want to serve. That's another thing, get me. I just, you know, I just don't been through some stuff. Everybody that don't go to church and don't believe God wants to have their fooling in the church. Yeah. I don't understand that. You think because you, you got buried it, you had your funeral in the church, you're going to go to heaven? You don't pay for hell. The ways of sin and death, you paid to go where you're going. But if y'all don't hear nothing else I said today, you better save yourself. I can't save my, I can't save my sons. I can't save my wife. I can't save nobody but Ted. And I'm soft. This sugar. I got an S on it. I didn't want to lie to tell you one with the other. So this sugar. But I know it's S, y'all gonna think it's salt. I'm not lying to you. This sugar. I marked it. And this is where we have gone in the church. That everybody don't want to hurt nobody's feeling. But when the disciple was sent out an apostle, they got hung upside down, they got all that because they decided to be. Tell the truth anyway. They told him, don't go back out there talking about that man no more. They went right back out there and talk about that man no more. The world tell us don't talk about him no more. And we shut up. And we start talking about, you know, God is good. They don't mind you saying God, long as you don't say Jesus. So that's what we don't, we don't, we don't pat a cake down. Because we want to be liked by the world. This is what he said. He said, for the promise is unto you and your children. I want that to get into y'all parents. If you do right, if you get right, then your children. That was talking about, fill them up. They won't depart. 
because they got something to stand on. But when you ain't right, how do you expect for them to be right? He says, save yourself from this untoward generation. Save yourself from the perverse world. Save yourself from this troublesome world. Save yourself from this quicker world, ungrateful world. But he said, promise made, promise kept. That's what he wanted to be, the salt of the earth. Salt, sugar. God is so awesome because he wanted to know. Listen to what he said in Matthew 25 and 31. He said, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angel with him, then shall he sit upon his throne of glory and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. The sheep, huh? You see, you see what it says? And the shepherd shall divide the sheep from the goat, and he shall set the sheep on the right. You know that I move the salt on the right, sugar on the left. This is when God getting ready to judge the world. And he said, I'm going to separate the salt from the sugar. And all y'all that think y'all going to come in half and half. He said, I'm going to separate the salt and the sugar. But some of y'all think y'all in between. He ain't looking for no in between. He's looking for you to be fully persuaded that I'm God. And if I have to die, that's what I have to do. He who served two masters had to lie to one of them. He said, salt, not sugar. And now everybody got a sweet too. But don't nobody want to be what God called them to be. Where God disciples at? Where the light of the world at? He said, a city that you won't hide your life. And now the church gone in because the church is hiding. I, I, I feel y'all spirit. A lot of y'all ain't paying attention. And, and, and a lot of y'all ain't paying attention because you already made your decision. But I understand it. Save from the Bible. The save means to be delivered. So when people start telling me they say, it said that you should be delivered. And everybody that I talk to in the church now act like they ain't delivered. They say, I'm still working on some things. I am too, but I'm saved. How many of y'all white on the inside? Most of y'all don't eat mullet because it's a cheap fish. But when we were coming up, that's all the fish we can get because we ain't had the money for the, all, the expensive fish. So I got uh, accustomed with mullets. And every time I seen somebody clean a mullet, you know, they scale them and Get all the scales off them. And then they split them down and scrape all the guts out. And then I hear my dad and different one be saying, you got to scrape all that black out. Right? It reminds me of the church is mullets. Because God be wanting to get all that black out you, the sin out you. And that's why he said, the only way he can do it is he do it. He do it. But he got to do it by a word. That's why we can't sugarcoat this. That's why we can't make excuses like, uh, uh, God know I was going to do this. Everybody tell me God know they were going to do what they do. Gay said God know that I was going to be gay. Well, why he gave you two different sex organs? And then, how can you multiply? Oh, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying, we make God so difficult. But why animals don't get mixed up? All in the, in the zoos, all in the, in the Africa and all them places. I ain't never seen an elephant try to get a horse. But we act like we confused, but he built us in his image and enlightenment. How we confused? How we, how, how the animal going to do? He tell the water to stay right there, the water obey him. He tell a hurricane or a tornado to come, everybody obey him but us. 
but he built us in his image and likeness. But he come this morning to tell you, save yourself. Because you can't save nobody else. I don't got to that point now that I realize that I can't save nobody. The national anthem to hell is I did it my way. You're going to be sitting down there in hell talking about I did it my way. You know the national anthem. Y'all gonna be y'all national anthem to hell gonna be I did it my way. And God said that's 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 what I'm gonna have you. Because you're gonna be conscious. When you go to hell, you're gonna be still conscious of everything going on. Ain't that something? You're gonna have your own department store with your own worms, your own stuff, your own fire. And I tell everybody all the time, you know what confused me. How it's gonna be dark in hell when you got fire down there? What kind of fire that is? It's a quenching fire that never go out. Ain't that something? But you're going to be able to see your homeboys and all the people you ran with in hell. What God you offer? Stupid. Knowing the truth, seeing the truth, but still believing a lie. Now that's stupid. God tell you he wants you to be the salt and we trying to be these two. He don't want no sugar. He don't want nobody dressing the word up. He wants somebody to tell it just like it is. Promise made. Promise kill. This is what he said. He tell us the ways of sin is death. And what we do, we don't believe it. He come back and tell you, he said, for, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. That's Isaiah 44 and 3. He said, and a flood upon the dry land. I will pour my spirit upon the sea and my blessing upon their now offspring. He said, I will, I, will, I will bless your offspring. He tell you, if you just serve me, he come back in Matthew 5 and 6. He said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. He said, ain't no question about it. Promise made, promise kept. If you thirst after me, if you come after me, he said, seek ye first the righteousness. Huh? And, and you'll have all the other stuff be added to you. He said, but first you got to seek it first, the kingdom and his righteousness, and all the other stuff be added. But we don't want to seek it. He said, commit thy ways to the Lord, and you can ask whatever you will. A lot of us ain't got it because we ain't, we ain't committed. This is what he said. He come back in Romans 14 and 13. He said, let us not therefore judge one another anymore. And people love that. But if I discern who you will, I'm judging you. This is what he said. My opinion is a judge. And as I preach right now, some of y'all got your own opinion about what I'm saying is right or wrong. But it's okay. I'm coming from the, from the book. So if you are judging the book, then he said, the word became flesh and dwelt among you. So that means if I'm telling you the word, then you going against the word, you got to be going against him. So that's why I don't get mad with nobody. Let me finish this right here. He said, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or occasion to fall in his brother's way. That means I should never do nothing that's going to offend my brother and make him stumble. So that means if you don't put something in somebody's way and they stumble, you know, y'all like that scripture when it said, oh, if your brother don't eat meat, don't eat meat. But what about the rest of it that you don't did in front of your brother? Don't be talking about no meat. Don't be talking about no meat. Talk about your life. He come back in, in, in Romans 14 and 23, and he said, and he that doubt is damned. He that doubt what I'm saying today, he said, he, you is damned. He said, the salt of the earth, you sugar. He said, the salt of the earth, you black and white. This is what he said. This is what he said right here. And he that doubt is damned if he eat, because he eat it not of faith. Y'all sit here eating what I'm saying, but not of faith. He said, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if you doubt that's sin. Save yourself. Don't worry about it, everybody else. Make it personal. Save yourself. It's in the word. He said, save yourself from this untoward, this perverse world, this unfair world, this wicked world, this quicker world. He said, save yourself. That's what he said. He's telling, he said, he that 
doubt is damned. I said, Lord, have mercy. I've been not question nothing. Don't trust everything you see, even salt in the election. Which one? Which one is salt? Even though I showed y'all, y'all still say, ah. Seems like they ought to look different, don't it? Seem like they ought to. So when we look at each other now, you got to look at another perspective. You got to do some prudent inspection. You got to do some judging. You got to say, you say you say, ah, you white. I don't know. That's how the devil come in like false apostles and his ministers change themselves into an angel of light because it's in the scripture. It says they can change themselves and look just like us and we'll sit right in the church and say, it's okay. But if you had the spirit of God and you were saved, you will be able to discern something ain't right. Is y'all going to say y'all self? This is what he said. He said, before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divide his sheep from the goat. He shall set the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them, on his right hand, come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. He said, come, you that stays salty. Come. <coughs> this is what the church has begun to do. Halloween coming. Wicked day. They used to sacrifice children. But the church just want to be, look like they right. They substitute Halloween for Hallelujah night. Or trunk or tree night. That's still Halloween. And the reason why, before Halloween came, it was all saint night. That way they used to go have church and worship God. But the enemy said, I'm going to bring me a night. The church don't have all saints right now. They have Halloween. This is what he said. First John 2 and 15. He said, love not the world. Save yourself from this untoward world. He said, love not the world. That's 2 and 1 John <coughs> 2 and 15. He said, love not the world, neither the things in the world. He said, not that I don't want you to have a nice thing, but don't let the thing come before me. He can give me a couple million, but I ain't going to let the million overtake me that I won't be in church Sunday. <clears throat> that I won't still be before God. If he gave y'all a million. Uh, participation. Right now, if he gave you a million, you'll think about all the things you thought you wanted to do. Instead of coming to church, you'll build a church off to your house. This is what he said. He said, love not the world, nor the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So now that's when you become sugar. And people say, oh, you don't think God wanted to... Love the world. You don't think God want me to love my family? Because I ain't say it. He ain't said that. He ain't said that. He said, love not the world. He ain't said not to love money. He said, don't be in love with it. Even from the back, it's hard to tell. 
So now it's hard to tell when you see people jumping in church. And you see people running in church. And you see everybody on the internet talking about they're a prophet from heaven. Can I introduce something else to y'all to show you where they're playing in church? Tell me why would any church be on TV selling prayer cross, prayer shawl? Everybody bound me. Everybody be in church with prayer shawl wrapped around me. Now let me explain that to you. When God went to the holies of the holy, he rent the veil from top to bottom. That man can have access to him himself. So if you rent from top to bottom, you don't need a priest. You don't need nobody. You can go to God yourself. He opened that door up when he rent the veil. Now we would think we need T.D. Jake to pray, pray for me. T.D. Jake can't get no prayer room. If he could, he'll be going to change his son. But see, if he would have saved himself, his son wouldn't be gay. Y'all ain't got to say nothing, y'all. I'm all right, I'm all right. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you how we get fooled by a name what have been getting fooled by who God is. Because God is, God is the one we got to look at. I don't want you to look at me. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. God wants you to save yourself. I don't care if you don't get a dime today. Save yourself. Get yourself right. Because he said if you save, he'll save your children. That's a promise made, promise kept. I know it's kept because he did it for me. He said save yourself. He's telling us that. This is what he said. He said, but love the world. He said, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Let me tell you how that works. The lust of the eyes see something. The lust of the flesh says, it's good. Pride tell you got to get it. You know, that's why y'all wife, y'all women can't go to the mall and the places when y'all got bills to pay. Because y'all will say, man, I'm going to pay half of that bill. The one thing about good power, when they say it's off at 4 o'clock, hit the switches you want to. Play with it. Play with it. Ain't no use to come here, huh? They just start speaking in tongues like God going to turn them lights back on. It ain't happening. He told you to do what you're supposed to do. Pay what's the Caesar, give to Caesar. He tell you that. Don't, don't try to play. This is what he said. He's telling us that. He said, he said, the proud life. He said, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that do the will of God will abide forever. Y'all hear that? Boy, that sound like a promise to me. What y'all think? But the church show sure getting quiet. Let me show you the promise. He said in Romans 4 and, and 20. Everybody said that Abraham seed, but listen what he said. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in the faith, giving glory to God, huh? and being full persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform it. And therefore, it was imputed to him a righteousness. But y'all tell me he ain't a promise keeper. Abraham trusted. He said, Abraham, come out from your kindred. And we don't want to go. And now in the day we make excuses that we can't live right in this world. No, it ain't as hard. Y'all talk to him. It's hard. And we find lies to say why we can't make. <coughs> it ain't true, but we find lies. How you know that, Apostle? Titus 2 and 11. He said, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So all men can have salvation. Ain't I right? And salvation is protection, preserve, healing, and deliverance. He said, but he says to all men, he ain't putting them like, well, not all men. He said, teaching us that the nine ungodly and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present world. He said, you can do it in this present world. And that's why he tell you in Romans, he said, love not the world. 
He tells it. And then he says, be not conformed to the world, but be transferred in the renewing of your mind. You got to get this world out your mind. People don't understand, man. They tell us not to do nothing. Man, I'm a, it's hard, man. It's hard on me, too. <coughs> well, this is what he said. Troublesome. Ungrateful. Unfair. Unruly. Unseemly. Crooked. <coughs> and as I close, Mark 10, Y'all get that because I want y'all to look at it too. Mark 10 and 27. Stupid. Knowing the truth, seeing the truth, but still believing a lie. <coughs> this is what he said. And Jesus looking upon them saying, with man, it is impossible to be saved. But with God, but with God, for with God, all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and has followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man has left house, a brother, a sister, a father, a mother, a wife, a children, a land for my sake and the gospel. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. He said, not when you get to heaven. You ain't going to be able to enjoy it. You ain't going to be able to need nothing to spend up in heaven. He said, now. He said, now, right now. If you save yourself, he said, he said, I promise you this to you now. This is what he said. He said, houses. He said, I'll give you houses. He said, I'll give you brothers. I'll give you sisters. I'll give you mama, huh, mother. I will give you children and land. Huh? With persecution and in the world to come eternal life. He said, I'll give you all this if you just be the salt of the earth. Don't change my gospel to sugar. Don't, don't, don't be scared to tell nobody that you saved and sanctified and that you love God. Don't, don't be ashamed to tell people. It's only one way to get to him. I know they say there's a lot of ways to get to God, but you try them. I ain't, I ain't knocking nobody. I, I just, you can't, you can't knock nobody. He's telling us that because he wanted to know. And he said, save yourself from this untoward generation. In 2 Peter 2 and 20, he said, for if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter is worse with them than, than the beginning. He said, now you started with me, and now you don't went back. He said, now, it's going to be worse for you. Why it going to be worse, Apostle? Why, why it going to be worse? He said, well, it had been better for them not to have known the ways of righteousness then after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. He said, like a dog returning back to a vomit. You went back even after God had made it right for you. He made you softer. But because you went back, you have to start changing the gospel to fit you. And so many people are changing the gospel to fit them. But he says, save yourself from this untoward generation. Save yourself from this world. And that's why so many people are, are confused and bothered by this church. 
And I, I, I be seeing people coming outside and they be taking a, the picture of the sign that said heaven and hell. And they think that we saying everybody come here is going to go to heaven. And everybody outside this church is going to go to hell. That ain't the vision God gave me. He gave me if I preach church the truth, then when they hear the truth, they can make it to heaven. But if they go back out to hearing the truth and do what they want to do, they'll go to hell. Had nothing to do with Pensacola. It had to do with our ministry because we get the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. God trying to tell us something because in order to make it, we got to do it his way. I heard the other day that he the way, the truth, and the light. No one can come to him. Life without God is like an unsharpened pencil. No point. Can you matter one to, one to write and your pencil don't have no point? When you don't have God in your life, it's no point. Repent is not when you cry. Repent is when you change. I was telling y'all about them cigarettes. And I was telling about how I found a pack of cigarettes on the property. And I hate seeing trash on God land or uh, church being filthy. And when I found the pack, I picked the pack up and I took a picture of what it said. And the pack of cigarettes said warning. And so many times when God sent words to us, he be warning us. And the pack said, tobacco smoke increased risk of lung cancer and heart disease. And I said, why would a person keep smoking? And then when they get lung cancer, they mad with God. But it told you on the path that if you keep smoking, you can have lung cancer, heart disease. Then what really got me, it said, even to the non-smoker. So you know what? I ain't letting nobody smoke around me no more. That, 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 no, y'all, uh-uh. You can take that by yourself. And if you're riding with me, you can get out of my car and walk. You ain't killing me, and I ain't smoking. He said the back of smoke increased lung cancer, a heart disease. So he warned you on the pack so you can't sue him. God warned us in his Bible that the ways of sin is death. And we keep sinning, we just like a cigarette smoke. We keep smoking. And we keep sinning because we don't believe that. Until the doctor says, I see your lungs and your liver black as all that dough. And then you want to start coming to church praying. Don't use God like he'll do, boy. But he told me, Terry, make it personal. Save yourself. It's preacher that preach and other people get saved and they go to hell. He told me to save myself. So I know I got to be white. I know I got to be walking right. I know I got to be talking right. And no way that I respect for y'all to live right if I'm not living right. So I first had to sanctify myself like God sanctified himself that you could be sanctified. So if I sanctify myself and I'm giving you the truth and you don't sanctify yourself, no blood won't be on my hand. Save yourself from this untoward generation. 